Did remote ID fail in the United States? Before we get into that, let's cover some background. First, what is remote ID? It's been defined as a digital license plate for your drone. Really what it is, is it broadcasts your drone's location, your altitude and velocity along with the location of the controller or the takeoff point. Now, Remote ID was introduced back in 2019 with a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking or NPRM from the FAA. Initially, the FAA wanted network Remote ID, meaning that each Remote ID module or each Remote ID drone would send the data to the cloud. Now, over 53,000 people responded to the NPRM, many of them stating that network remote ID was a bad idea. Due to the opposition, broadcast remote ID instead became a requirement in September of 2023. Now, if you're wondering why we need remote ID in the first place, well, the FAA and other agencies wanted to be able to identify drone pilots to mitigate potentially unsafe operations. So who needs it? Remote ID is required for all drones that are registered or required to be registered. And I know what you're thinking, but Greg, what does that actually mean? Well, it means that all drones that are flown under Part 107 and drones that are over 0.55 pounds that are flown recreationally must broadcast Remote ID. This brings us to some cool equipment that we got a few months ago from DroneTag. DroneTag released the Rider Remote ID Detector and they sent us a unit to test. The Rider is a small portable remote ID receiver, perfect for anyone on the go. So a big thank you to Lucas and the entire DroneTag team uh, for sending us the unit so that we could test it and use it. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the results that we found while we were testing. Over the last few months, we've taken this thing to true drone events, multiple local events here in Prescott, and we even had it while we were driving through, well, a little bit all over the place in the state. And it detected several types of drones, including DJI, Autel, Parrot, Freefly, Inspire Flight, Wintra, and many others. Notably missing from that list is actually Skydio, which uses a 5.8 gigahertz uh, band, which DroneTag was aware of and told us ahead of time, and they're working on an update to be able to get that signal. A bit more about the Rider. This is the unit right here. It's a 64 gram remote ID receiver with belting LTE and Bluetooth. It has a battery life of about six to 10 hours. That's what's advertised. From our experience, we found out that it's about six hours while transmitting LTE. Charging for the device is done using the bottom of the device right here, using USB-C. Uh, this also has the optional large antenna that we put in here. We actually purchased this one separately, but it comes with a standard normal smaller antenna. We also printed our own 3D mount that we can attach like a GoPro, but uh, they also provided us with two different mounts that you can use as a belt clip if you want to. Now to review the collected data, there are two different options. You can do it on your phone or you can do it on a desktop computer. Now the options here are largely the same, but the drone tag app seems to have some additional configuration options for the rider itself for the unit. And speaking of the data, let's take a look at some of the flights that we captured. Now, over the last three months, we've detected over 200 flights. Several of them were within class Bravo airspace or class Delta controlled airspace, one of them being here in Prescott. And most of these flights were within the rules. Actually, a lot of the flights were within the rules, operating below 400 feet and well within visual line of sight. A few, however, were questionable. So let's take a look at these. Flight number one, and we've blurred some of the information here from this flight but uh, you can see that we have the drone pilot location and the aircraft location. Now, this flight is pretty close to the Prescott Airport and the pilot is flying at about 300 feet in a 50-foot grid right in the approach path at the airport, not something that would have actually been approved by the tower. Flight number two here, this one is pretty bad. The operator appears to be flying at 1100 feet above their takeoff location. And to make matters worse, this actually happened on the outer edge of the class Bravo airspace surface area in Phoenix. Uh, this is actually a 300 foot grid. And flight number three here, this is one that again is questionable. Uh, there's a method here for this where you could actually have done that legally, but it seems that this drone was flown over three miles in a straight line from the takeoff location. 
Now you're probably thinking, Greg, you're just trying to scare us. And the answer is really no, that's not the purpose here. But I want you to know, and I want you to understand that some folks out there could be monitoring your flights, even if you don't ever see them. We were able to catch flights as far as 24 miles away. That's right, 24 miles away from this little device right here. So just make sure that you use common sense when you're flying. This is really the bare minimum. And more importantly, just don't be that guy, okay? Now with these results comes the question, do we expect remote ID, specifically network remote ID, to show up anytime again in future regulation? And I have to say yes, more than likely. Network remote ID is important to the unmanned traffic management or UTM. And the FA has mentioned multiple times that we will more than likely see network remote ID in the future. Now, is that a sign that remote ID actually failed? I also don't think so. Uh, I think this was just the first step in what the FA is implementing. Expect to see remote ID again when the FA releases the NPRM on BV loss, beyond visual line of sight operation, because of the whole UTM plan. And if you want more information about remote ID in itself, you know, how it works, how to check if your drone is actually compliant, you can take a look at this video right here. And that's it for now. Fly safe, and we'll see you in the next video.